This is my game Paint Warfare, a multiplayer first person shooter where you are a bean with jetpacks, grapple hooks, and even black hole guns. And I know what you're thinking. Was it always this well designed, gameplay rich, and polished? Nope. So let's go back six months. This is my game, a humble FPS game. There's really no players, not really any strong direction of gameplay, only a handful of good maps. The team modes aren't very fleshed out, and the guns, at least for the most part, are uh, just simple cartoony models of real guns that are retextured from Sketchfab, but without anything like aim down sights or any recoil when you shoot them. And so with this, a lot of work needed to be done. Now out of space, Paint Warfare is an FPS game, which has a very simple and repetitive core gameplay loop depending on the game modes. And yet we somehow ended up having players who have played the game to the point of thousands of kills. And the reason is because similar to something like Titanfall or TF2, I have designed Paint Warfare to specifically be for people who love honing in on their skills with the movement mechanics. And one of the main ways I do this is through the ability system. Now at the start of the year, this system was pretty fleshed out, where you could choose one ability that recharges either on a timer or every kill, which encourages you, for some abilities, to go into combat and get a kill to recharge your ability, or just die, which also recharges your ability. And although we had a decent number of really interesting abilities like super speed boosts, invisibility, a hang glider, a turret, and so many more, there was only one ability slot, so most of these didn't even end up being used. And my concern was originally that each of these abilities on their own are designed to be pretty overpowered. For example, with the turret ability, for each kill you get, you can place on a turret which locates enemies and also does damage to them. Or with the grapple hook, it's possible to grapple quickly to the top of the map bounds, which has some disadvantages, making you kind of a sitting duck in the air, but it also throws a lot of people off when you're in a gunfight with them. But after thinking about some other games like Valorant or this mobile game I used to play called Pixel Gun 3D, I noticed that they were able to pull off having two or even four different abilities. And I realized that if everyone has multiple abilities and is overpowered, then literally no one is better off than the other. Like, yes, it increases the pace of the game, and that's not to everyone's taste, but if I wanted to make something slow-paced and tactical, like CSGO, well, I wouldn't, because there's already CSGO and a number of derivative games. So for our new ability system, unlike Valorant's system, where you choose a class with different preset abilities, I wanted something more modular, like Pixel Gun 3D, where you get to pick and choose your own combination of abilities. And to do this, I divided the abilities into two types, active and passive abilities. Now how it works is your active ability recharges on every kill you get, and is something really powerful, like the invisibility for a few seconds, a dash, or the turrets I mentioned earlier. Now the second type is a passive ability, which modifies some kind of base stat or aspect of the movement. So for instance, there's the jetpack, which lets you always fly for a few seconds after each jump, speed boosts, which just increase your run speed by 50%, or this glider, which is kind of similar to the elytra in Minecraft, or a real life wingsuit, in that you can build up momentum by flying down from places, and then use it to fly very quickly across the map. Now with the primary and passive ability system, the sort of trade-offs to picking different abilities, and later down the line I also intend to add a super ability, similar to Valorant, in which after you get a set amount of kills, which persists across lives, you unlock a super powerful ability, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Now with this new system, we can start fleshing it out with some really cool new abilities, some of which I'll leave until later in this devlog because they tie in with other features, but with these new abilities, instead of just boosting your movement like the previous abilities have, I wanted to impact the gunplay in some way. Aside from just simply boosting gun stats like this hardened bullet ability does, I wanted to make some abilities that sort of throw a curveball in your opponent's gunfights with you. So for example, there's this active half shield ability, which makes you completely immune to bullets and melee damage from in front for a couple seconds, 
so the only way you can get killed is from behind or by explosives. Where it really shines though is in short range. So in the game we have occasional modifiers which randomize some of the game rules for all the players in your game. And one of them is this melee minigame with spoons. And with the half shield, you can just charge through enemies for a few seconds, which is just awesome. Another way of influencing gunfights is by giving one player the upper hand through information. So I made this radar ability, which is sort of like wall hacks, and reveals the location of all enemies in your lobby. But in a game as extremely fast paced as Paint Warfare, where I even discourage camping, through a number of mechanics, such as really powerful short range weapons and wall bangable explosives, I feel like hiding isn't as huge an aspect of the gameplay as something like CSGO or Valorant, so if you have any ideas of how I could improve this ability, let me know in the comments. But yeah, that's the ability system, now on to improvements with the maps. So the old Paint Warfare maps had two really big problems. One was that they were just too small, and the other was that they just looks bad. I mean, look at this. Now, the small maps were designed originally under the premise that Paint Warfare was going to be a small game with maybe two to three people online playing the game at once. And did Paint Warfare become a small game with only two to three people playing at once? Uh, no. So, for future maps in the works, I obviously would make them a lot larger with way more areas and paths. But for existing maps that the community loved, I had to be a bit more careful. So one example is this Blizzard map, where if your lobby had anything more than maybe 6 players, it would result in this crazy dogfight where you would immediately get killed from 16 different angles after each respawn and really had zero chance at survival. And the reason for this was because the playable area with actual cover and spawn points was really just here, which is just a tiny slice of the actual map. Because if you went anywhere else, you were literally in the open and you were at a disadvantage. So I worked on making more props and actually interesting playable areas in order to encourage people to spread out more and use more of the existing map. A super simple way to do this was to introduce a massive fort, a tent, walls, and boulders to make more of these areas more tactical rather than just leaving you a sitting duck. But what if we made these maps not only take advantage of the horizontal movement in the game, which is literally just sprinting, dashing, sliding, but also the vertical movement we have to give you an advantage. And for that, I started stacking different crates, added this massive radio pole, and this huge rock formation, which you're able to climb to get a really strong vantage point over the whole map. Now, our next goal is to make the maps absolutely gorgeous. What I felt was missing were different kinds of life and vegetation in the maps, aside from these just props and cold buildings. So I took one look at Zelda and wanted to make that my entire game's personality, which, fun fact, was made by a small team of just 300 people that are much more talented than me. And after trying and unsuccessfully making a tree and some tumbleweed plants that didn't look any good, I figured I would just drop my ego and use some asset packs made by some visual artists who know what they're doing. And after a number of reworks to the maps and about a hundred dollars, here are how some of the maps turned out. I know, you guys can stop clapping now and take a seat. The last three improvements are centered around pushing and improving the team modes in my game. 
And the reason for this ties into the reason that I made a multiplayer game in the first place, which is from my fond memories as a kid playing team games like Pixel Gun 3D or Minecraft Worlds together with friends. And I just wanted to make it so there's ways to work together towards a common goal and not just purely compete. So in a lot of cooperative games, they constantly provide you with information about your teammates, whether it be the health of your squad in Fortnite or the position in the map of your team in Valorant. I really dislike adding a lot of UI because I think it gets cluttered. So I decided to show this information in Paint Warfare inside of the game world. For example, using some fancy camera hacks and shader magic, I replicated Valorant's see-through wall effect for teammates, and for their health, I made it so the health bar flashes for a few seconds every time your teammates take any kind of damage. Now, knowing how much health your teammate has is great, but fairly pointless unless there's something you can do to help them, which leads us into the next big overhaul, which is new mechanics. Now, there's lots of ways games use mechanics to make people work together, whether it be making a flag your team has to capture, or allowing you to play a support role to help someone else, which is where the ability system we made earlier comes into play. One of the most common examples of this is the healer role, so I wanted to make an ability around this, but we need to make sure that the healing ability is just as useful in single player free for all as it is in team modes like team deathmatch or capture the flag. And for this I made the medical kit, which heals twice in one use. So first when you throw it down either on your feet or on someone else, it deals a heal splash damage, which immediately replenishes 30 health. Then, for about 12 seconds, as long as you or one of your teammates are standing in it, it regenerates your health, meaning you can get a lot of use out of it. And since there's an ability for health, I've also made a complementary ability that you can equip for damage. I know, pretty original. And for that, we have the ammo kit. The way it works is you can throw it down to apply a massive buff to the reload speed and fire rate of anyone or even allied turrets that you or your team places inside of this circle. Now these two abilities will need some playtesting but hopefully they should add a lot more depth to team matches. Now the final thing for these team modes is more social features and this is sort of like a gimmick category like cool little details. So a few days ago I was playing this pretty niche you know, small indie game called Roblox, and a feature I really liked while I was playing Cooking Simulator were these chat bubbles above people's heads, which obviously leads to hilarious YouTube videos and memes, and, you know, funny YouTube videos means we can increase our play account. So after a bit of tinkering, I put together this cartoon text bubble that pops up above your head, which, to be completely honest, unless you're playing with friends, you're probably gonna get killed before anyone sees it. but I kept it in regardless. The final feature is that this respawn screen is completely lacking, and I wanted to make it so it feels really personal when you get killed by someone. I wanted to incite a sense of anger, like you want revenge. So in the respawn screen, I fetch your killer's Steam profile picture, weapon they used, and the health they had left, and I made it so you just sit there, watching them run around alive. And then, the next time you respawn, I award you bonus points for getting a revenge kill, which just feels really great now. And I mean, that's really all I can think of which grew the game into what it is today. It's still a pretty small indie game, but if you're interested in trying it out, it's completely free and the Steam link to Paint Warfare is in the description. If you thought this was a good video, consider interacting with it for the algorithm. Thanks so much for watching. Have a sick day. Bye.